don't know about you, but if I've already selected a name while I'm in the decision-making process of getting a dog, I'm a goner. I'm going to get that dog regardless. But maybe you're in a different point. Maybe you have decided to get a dog, but are undecided on the names. I want to talk about uh, how to name a dog. It really falls into four categories as I see it. You've got your classic names, your popular names, your humorous names, or your clever names. By the way, this is what a rainy day in Waikiki looks like. Really doesn't matter. You're going to go to the beach and swim. Oh, I'm not much of a, a sun bunny, so I'll go there and swim and run and surf. You're going to get wet anyway, so it's not too bad. Those classic names, I, I don't get them as much. Uh, these are common, were common 40 years ago, but still they show up. You've got your pepper and biscuit, muffin, sparky, rex, lady, lucky. Butch and Bingo. I don't think you can go wrong with those. And uh, a popular name today that is making the rounds again is Finn. Cooper. Well, I guess Cooper probably never went out of style. Uh, <laughs> in class, when an application comes up, uh, because before people enroll, I know the dog's names, and I get a Dave or a Butcher and Evelyn, all of which I got this year, it makes the dog seem superhuman and intelligent. I think that's kind of cool. And of course, you get your, your cute preppy names. Um, those are perennial. Molly and Abby, Maddie, Hunter, Parker, all good choices <laughs> when it comes to clever. Oh, and by the way, I should say that sometimes in your decision-making process, you think about sound. It's recommended that the name be one or two syllables and that the sound be kind of sharp. If you think about classic Border Collie names, um, Jack or Kate, um, again, they, they have a certain punch to them. Uh, not necessary. And what do you think? Uh, should you or should you not rename an adult dog? I see no reason not to rename an adult dog. In fact, since I recommend that you train the dog formally, as soon as he comes into your home, don't let him acclimate. He'll acclimate much better if you start the training process immediately. You're going to be then teaching him commands and prefacing sit, down, heel, come with his name. So it'll be really automatic. Um, absolutely. You don't care for the dog's name, change it. You're developing a new relationship and he is not going to mind one little bit. My friend Jan Plagans is someone that I will bounce names off of when I was considering. And I have to say that her recommendations have been spot on. I think about the names I was considering that she vetoed, and I am so happy. Um, but And she's named her dog a lot of different dogs, a lot of uh, great names. One of my favorites that came to mind when I was writing this video is uh, Minno for her Min Pin. Now, she also has Doberman. So, how can that not bring a chuckle? About 15 or 20 years ago, I had a student in my advanced class. Now, I had her in class maybe 15 weeks, and I was calling do uh, the owners and handlers out, or dogs and handlers out for a certain exercise by using the dog's name first. And I said, Cinder and Ella. I never realized that Ella had named her dog Cinder. Cinderella? It's one of those clever names hidden in plain sight. You know, I, I think I'm pretty attuned to this and I did not realize it until, well, well down the pipe. One that I did as a result of that, since my business name is Amiable, my name's Amy, I named my next dog Abel. And you know that most people did not get the connection, amiable dog training. 
um, and that his name was as a result of that, even though the spelling was A-V-L-E. So I would like to know how you chose your dog's name. And I'd also like you to post a picture if you don't mind. Next time I do a video, I'm going to talk about how bad names affect your dog's behavior. And I really believe they do. Until we speak, stay dry.